Hey friends, Justin here. It's official. I'm gonna be through hiking the 1100 kilometer Great Divide Trail this August. I've been planning and preparing for this trip behind the scenes for a while now, and it's got me thinking, is the Great Divide Trail the hardest through hike in North America? Harder than other long trails like the Continental Divide Trail. With the Great Divide Trail, or GDT, being in my backyard, I've hiked probably around 10 to 20% of it and can definitely attest to some of the difficulties that you'll encounter when trying to tackle this trail. But there's more to it than what I've seen and a lot of craziness has led to it almost killing many people. Today I want to talk about some of the challenges that you encounter on the Great Divide Trail, what makes it so wild and crazy, and really dig into whether it could be the most difficult trail in North America. But before I get into those things, let me give you a little bit of background about the Great Divide Trail. So it starts at the same spot that the Continental Divide Trail finishes. It's at the Canadian US border in Waterton National Park. And then from there, it goes through the Canadian Rockies, passing through a whole bunch of protected parks, as well as two different provinces. Well, the history of the Great Divide Trail is pretty long. The modern community around it is relatively new with the Great Divide Trail Association only having been assembled in its modern form in 2012. So as a result, there's not a lot of maintenance on this trail and it's a very raw experience. One of the first things I'm gonna talk about and the first thing that I started planning for was my itinerary. And this is super important because the Great Divide Trail goes through a few of the busiest protected parks in Canada. And you must have a permit for each of the campsites that you stay at within these parks, which for some people can end up being 20 or more permits that they're having to book with four to five different booking systems that they have to use because each of the national parks and provincial parks can have their own individual booking system. And with booking opening up months before a lot of people start the trail, you have to have your itinerary nailed down because you can't just get a blanket permit like you can for a lot of other longer trails in North America like the PCT or CDT. The infrastructure just isn't there for the Great Divide Trail. Logistics and resupply is another big difficulty with the Great Divide Trail. You're only going through mountain towns and these mountain towns just aren't set up for resupplying through hikers. The Great Divide Trail sees so few hikers start the trail that there's not a lot of infrastructure in place for resupply. Because of that, you have to send yourself resupply boxes. That's really the best way to do it. I've heard a lot of horror stories of people having to live off of cliff bars and snicker bars for sections of the trail because they weren't able to resupply effectively in these towns. Even with using resupply boxes, you're only able to resupply every five to 10 days, which can lead to some huge food carries. And based on my calculations, there's some sections of the trail where I'm gonna be carrying three times or more my pack base weight with food and water. And these kind of food carries really affect what kind of pack you can use on the trail, as well as how much distance you can cover because of how much weight you're gonna be carrying. Another aspect of the Great Divide Trail that makes it so difficult is how wild it is. A lot of the sections, there's no defined trail and you're on top of ridges, navigating and trying to avoid cliffs, and then you're down in valley bottoms, crashing through shrubs and trees. And while this is pretty common in the Canadian Rockies, people who are used to maintain trails might get caught a little bit unprepared with how much navigation is involved. And then the mental difficulties that you have to deal with when bushwhacking and dealing with parts of the trail where there is no defined trail. Weather is another big factor on the Great Divide Trail. It can snow any time of the year in the Canadian Rockies. I personally experienced a foot of snow in mid-August. And I've heard a story of someone do, taking 10 days to do a section of the trail, but for those days, they had to emergency shelter because they're dealing with hypothermia from the rain and cold and crossing glacier fed streams. When you're on top of those ridge tops, the weather can also roll in really quickly. I've personally experienced this where I was caught on top of a ridge top for quite a while in the middle of an electrical storm, and that is super scary and not fun. During that same electrical storm, some people a couple ridges over got struck by lightning and their pants caught on fire and their shoes got blown off their feet. So you have to be knowledgeable about how to read weather in the mountains and to be checking the weather quite often. But even then, the most experienced people, they can get caught unaware and with their pants down by the weather. And to top it all off, the entire trail is in grizzly bear country. And while normally they don't want anything to do with humans, you could catch one unaware and surprise it and it could eat your face. Last summer, I filmed a trip video about the day in the life of a solo hiker. And a lot of that took place on the Great Divide Trail. I'll post a link to that video right up there so check it out to see a little bit of a snippet of what the Great Divide Trail might be like. And definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in following along as I plan and prepare for the trip and then hike it this August. 